As developers, we want to use the latest and greatest technologies. However, sometimes we have to work on existing applications and use the existing framework or technology. In this video, I will show you how to use Blazor components in an existing ASP.NET Core MVC application. No more excuses for not using Blazor components in your existing .NET web application. I use an MVC application on .NET 8 generated by the default project template in Visual Studio 2022 for this demo. When I start the application, we see that there is a home and a privacy page. Both pages have some text and enough space to add more content. Let's add a Blazor component to enhance the application. Let's start by adding a components folder. Next, we create a Blazor component and name it random number. I prepared a code for this component because it's not the core of this video to show you how to implement Blazor components. I have a whole playlist with Blazor videos explaining Blazor in more detail, such as explaining how to implement Blazor components. I highly recommend watching those videos if you want to learn more about Blazor development. The component shows a random number and provides a button to generate a new random number. We also generate a value when the component is initialized and whenever the button is pressed. Now, the big question is, how do we integrate this Blazor component into our existing MVC application? We want to use the random number Blazor component on the index page of the MVC application. We use the HTML helper and its render component async method to render a Blazor component. We need to provide a render mode as the only argument. In this case, I want to use Blazor server as the interactivity mode. But you could also use Blazor WebAssembly. Let's talk about Blazor WebAssembly later in this video. Now, make sure to add the required using statement for the component's namespace. The integration of a Blazor component into our MVC application looks simple, right? But does it actually work? Let's start the application and see. Unfortunately, nothing happened and we see the same home page we saw before adding the Blazor component. The reason is that we first need to configure our ASP.NET Core MVC application to work with Blazor components. In the program.cs file, we register Blazor services using the add server side Blazor method in addition to the controllers and views. Next, we need to register the signal R connection for Blazor server as a middleware using the map Blazor hub method on the web application object. Next, we open the layout.cs HTML file, which contains the root of the HTML page layout. At the bottom of the page, we need to add the Blazor server script. Now, let's start the application again. As we can see, the random number is shown on the screen and whenever we click the generate button, a new number appears. It all happens client side, there is no page load required. When you implement more Blazor components, especially those who need access to specific features like routing, forms or other Blazor specific classes, you need to import those namespaces into your Blazor component files. We can reduce the number of using statements required to import the Blazor namespaces by adding an imports.razor file within the components folder of the application. It's similar to the imports file generated when using the default Blazor application template. Maybe you ask yourself why should you integrate Blazor components into your existing MVC application? You can only use C-sharp to implement server-side logic when using traditional MVC. If you want to have client-side interactivity on your website, you need to use JavaScript. However, when you add Blazor components to your existing MVC application, you can use C-sharp to implement the logic for your client-side interactivity. Maybe you already have some Blazor components from another project. You can extract them into a Razor components library and reuse those components within your MVC application. 
Speaking of Razor class libraries, let's create a new project, name it shared components and move the random number component into that shared Razor class library. We remove the implementation in our MVC application project and add a reference from the MVC application to the shared class library. Next, we open the index.cshtml file and point the using statement to the namespace from within the shared components project. And we start the application again. As you can see, the application still works and the random number blazer component is now loaded from the shared class library instead of from within the MVC project. If you want to make your Blazor components available from outside your MVC application, it might be worth starting implementing your components in a shared class library from the beginning. Otherwise, you can keep them all within your MVC application. But what if we want to use Blazor WebAssembly instead of Blazor Server in our MVC application? Let's start over again with a new MVC application. First, when using WebAssembly, we need a separate project that contains code that will be deployed onto the client. We create a new project and use the Blazor WebAssembly app empty project template. I usually name the project the same as the main application and add client at the end. Make sure that the ASP.NET Core hosted option in the project creation wizard isn't selected and create the new project. When the project is created, we add a project reference from the MVC application to the newly created Blazor WebAssembly project. Next, we need to install a NuGet package to the MVC project that will add Blazor WebAssembly functionality. We install the Microsoft.ASP.NET Core.Components.WebAssembly.Server package. Next, we open the program.cs file of the MVC project. Here, we want to add the use WebAssembly debugging method for the development environment. Adding it will allow you to debug the WebAssembly components in the browser's dev tools. Next, we add the use Blazor framework files after the use authorization method. It configures the application to serve Blazor related files. Now we open the program.cs file of the WebAssembly project we created. Here we remove the lines that add root components. Next, we remove the page folder, including the index page component, the app component, the main layout component, and the example JS interop.cs file. Remember, we don't want to have a fully fledged Blazor WebAssembly application. Instead, we want to use Blazor components within our MVC application. We now only have an imports.razor file and the program.cs file in the Blazor WebAssembly project. Next, we create a new Blazor component name it random number and insert the same component code we used in the Blazor server example before. We now want to use the random number component in our MVC application. Again, we open the index.cshtml file in the MVC application. This time though, the code looks different. We use the component tag, which is a tag helper that renders a Razor component. We provide the random number type and use WebAssembly pre-rendered as the render mode. Again, this video isn't about Blazor and its rendering modes. If you want to learn more about them, I highly recommend watching this video where I explain them in full detail. Last but not least, we open the layout.cshtml file and add the Blazor script at the end of the file. This time, we use the blazor.webassembly.js file instead of the blazor.server.js file. Now, we are ready to build and start the MVC application. As you can see, the website looks the same and the number generator works similar to the Blazor server implementation. The only difference is that we now execute the code client-side using WebAssembly instead of server-side using Blazor server via a signal R connection. 
This takes us to the question of whether you want to use Blazor Server or Blazor WebAssembly for your MVC application. The answer depends on different factors. For example, the application size increases when using Blazor WebAssembly. However, when you use Blazor Server, each client has a persistent WebSocket connection to your server and if the client has an internet issue, that becomes a problem. Or when you have many simultaneous users, it can also become an issue for your server. I highly suggest educating yourself on the differences between Blazor Server and Blazor WebAssembly before making a decision for your project. Of course, I have several videos covering Blazor Server and Blazor WebAssembly in more detail. If you want to skip educating yourself and want to make a decision now, I recommend starting with Blazor WebAssembly. We learned how to use Blazor components inside an MVC application. We not only learned how to use components from within the MVC project, but also how to use Blazor components from a shared class library. Besides Blazor Server, we also learned how to use Blazor WebAssembly to add interactivity to your existing MVC application. Adding Blazor to our existing MVC application allows us to add client-side interactivity implemented in C-sharp instead of JavaScript. We also quickly looked at the differences between Blazor Server and Blazor WebAssembly. If you want to learn more about .NET development, including Blazor, subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next video.